fellow people of the Earth, I am Day50 from Mutuncraft Productions, bringing you a new video on the Dynamic Map plugin by Mike Prim. You can watch the whole video, or skip to a certain section of the video, all of which are listed here. So to start off, you'll need a bucket server. Um, to get the uh, bucket server, just go to bucket.org and download the uh, latest version, or whatever version you want, I guess, and uh, it will create another fo folder that uh, Vanilla won't create, which is the plugins folder. This is where you'll put any plugins you want uh, for your server, which will change the server in some kind of way, and uh, make it better, I hope if that's what you're looking for. Anyway, so you're going to want to go to the Dynamic Map plugin page, which there'll be a link in the description uh, to get to here, and you can either download the latest recommended version if you've downloaded the latest bucket, um, or you can go to the bucket dev and go to files, and it will show all the files for the uh, uh, Dynamic Map releases, so if that's say if you have an older version of Craft Bucket and uh, Minecraft, you can download that version, and they'll all be listed here. Uh, the API you don't have to worry about unless you are a plugin developer or you want to create a uh, external um, branch plugin from Dynamic Map. Um, otherwise, don't worry about that. Just download the other releases, as it says here. So anyway, I'm going to download the latest recommended version, and you simply want to uh, just download the zip. Just download it. Yep. And then open it uh, using WinRAR or uh, 7-zip, either or. I use WinRAR. Uh, any kind of archiving program, you can simply just extract these two files that will be in the Dynamic Map uh, bin into your plugins folder. There will be a jar and a folder. So before you get started, you're actually going to want to run your server so that at, so that it enables the plugin and loads any external files it might need. And then once it's done that, as you can see, just uh, stop the server. Then you can go to your plugins folder, then DynMap, dyn and then you can start configurating it in any way you want. So to start with configuration, you're going to want to edit the configuration.txt file with any uh, any program that will keep the YAML format of the uh, thing, because this is actually YML format, even though it says .txt, it is YML format. So YML format, if you don't know, pretty much means you can't have any tabs in your uh, in your configuration, or any, in this file, you can't have any tabs, you can just use spaces. As you can see, this is all spaces, no tabs. So I would use a program like Notepad++, or um, any program, pretty much, I, I can't come up with any other names, but any program that will keep the YML format of the file. But if you were to see, if I press enter there, it's one thing with Notepad++, plus plus, if I press enter right there to make a new node, um, as you can see, they're actually tabbed in, which is, I don't, you don't want that, so you just want to use spaces. Yeah, just so you know that, uh, Notepad++ plus plus sometimes doesn't always space in it or tab in. Anyway, so I'm going to go over the components first. Uh, as you can see, this whole configuration is made up of, of components, I believe. Yeah, and pretty much components start with the dash class, and then the name of the um, class in the directory of the uh, Java. We, we won't get into that anyway. Um, but if you want to, you can disable the whole class, which I do not recommend unless you know what you're doing. Um, let's say you want to disable the web chat component, you can just comment all this, or you can get rid of it. I would probably comment it though. Um, but the probably the simplest way is just to uh, s say allow chat false. I just wanted to let you know that you can you can comment or just get rid of a component if you want to, if there isn't a disable option. But uh, most of these components are really useful, and I wouldn't recommend disabling any of them unless you really don't want to use them. So anyway, let's get into some of the components now. The first component is uh, the configuration component, don't get rid of that one. And then the second one, which is the one we're actually going to be doing things with, is the uh, internal client update component. So each component is made up with different nodes, or whatever they're called, I call them nodes. And you can change these nodes in any way you want, usually. So um, the send health node, this means through your map, through, through, through your map, uh, people can see uh, the health of the players in the game. Uh, if you disable this, you can't see the health. Pretty simple. And then the position, is the position of the players in the game. You can. It will still show the players on the right, I believe. Um, 
but uh, you can disable showing the position actually in the map. And then allow web chat. Uh, I would probably disable this because it's kind of unsafe, uh, even though there is an interval. This allows people to actually use the uh, use a chat window that will be in the dynamic map um, to chat with people in game. I'm going to disable that because I find that sort of unsafe. I don't want r some random person going onto a, a map and start typing and spamming in game. Even though they can't spam, sorry. There is an interval of how much they can chat. And But if you don't want to disable this, I would definitely recommend a derm saying hide web chat IP, turning that to true, so that the uh, IP of the person chatting is uh, off so that it doesn't show in game and then uh, that's that's some of the basic options so as you can see the configuration is really straightforward it also has it has comments actually in the file um, of what you can do for a lot of the options but if you're still confused there actually is a wiki if you go here there's a wiki on how to configure Dynmap and how to configure separate web servers and all a bunch of other stuff on the wiki and this goes really in depth on uh, what you can do and uh, and all the different non-self-explanatory options here, but most of this is pretty self-explanatory. But there is one thing I'd like to go over. It should be down here somewhere. Where is it? Oh yeah, the web server port. Um, so I had a lot of questions on my last Dynamic Map video about this, and everyone was confused, how do I port forward, how do I port forward? It really is simple, you just have to search online how to port forward for, for example, Linksys router, or whatever router you use, um, and then you want to port forward the 8123 port, or really whatever TCP port that you have opened that you want to use, but you can change it here, and uh, remember, or you have to remember this number if you're going to change it. Um, or if you don't change it, just remember eight one two three. And uh, that's one of the. Those are some of the main features in the configuration file. Let's go over some of the other features now. So um, now let's open our worlds. And all these t txt files are actually in YML format. So as I said before, make sure you don't use any tabs. So. Um, here we have what you can do in worlds is set different uh, aspects for each of your worlds in game. So, as you can see, a lot of this stuff is commented. I'm going to make a couple spaces here, and I'm going to copy this from here. This is the uh, I'm going to start a new node. So this is the name name of your world. I'm going to the world that I want to change is a uh, world, and I want to change the title of it in like in the game. So I'm going to change the title to uh, main or over world how about so this is how it'll be shown in the map the name of it will be overworld but in reality the name of the world is actually world so then you can change some other uh, things about it like let's see you can make it so there's only uh, let's copy you know what, let's just copy this whole part down here you can make it so it's only get rid of some of these comments you can make it so there's only one map used, or you can set any map, all the maps you want it to use. So let's get rid of uh, the cave map, so you don't want people to see looking into the caves um, of your map. And let's keep the flat map and the surface map. The flat map is just like a 2D view of your map, and uh, the surface map is a 3D view of your map. So that's cool. Now we've got rid of the cave map, and you've also reduced a lot of lag on the server by doing that. I believe, anyway. Dynag map doesn't cause that much lag, it causes more... Um, memory usage problems but if it do, it doesn't really use that many that much memory unless you have a bunch of worlds um, and um, really huge worlds too so there are a lot of more options you can change which is all listed down here and there's also help on the wiki for this too just go on the wiki and it will show you the maps configuration you can change the center point of your world and that's how it's centered on the web page using the x y z the x y and z coordinates of the world and uh, there's, there's a ton of options you can change. So you change them however you want to. So for any of the other configurations in here, um, there is help on the wiki. I don't really want to go in-depth on all of them because it really does go, a lot of these configurations do go really in-depth and uh, are really confusing if you're watching a video. It's better if you're reading and uh, going through a prompt on how to do it. So anyway, that's it for the configuration part of this video. Now on to running and displaying. So now you're going to want to launch your server finally, and it will read the new configurations and start the dynamic map. So let it do that quick. Okay, 
So now let's go back to our web browser. Google Chrome, Firefox, and Internet Explorer works for this. Then what you're going to want to type in is localhost 8123. And you can replace localhost with your IP or the IP of the server you're running the dynamic map on. That's what a lot of people were confused with um, last video. So I want to make sure that, that you guys understand. So listen now. Um, that this lo local host is just going to po um, point towards the IP of your computer. It's not going to point towards any web server or anything. You have to put the IP of which that dynamic map is on. So now, let's load this. And as you can see, it lists all the worlds I have on my server. I have Planetoids, World, World the Nether, World the End, and it will uh, show the different options. And as you can see, uh, I actually spelt world wrong in the world's config, um, so yeah, <laughs> it's supposed to be uppercase W, not lowercase. Uh, let me go fix that quick. Okay, so with a simple reload and a simple change of the world's configuration, we no longer have the caves for the world, which is now called the overworld. Uh, although this won't change the other two branch worlds, which is the nether and the end for this world, so you want to edit those separately. So anyway, isn't this a cool web interface, but wouldn't it be nice if we could actually see part of the map? Well, let's get started then. Let's open the console and type dyne map. Or you can do this in game too, too. Full render. And let's do world first. So this is going to start rendering uh, my main world. And you may start seeing some chunks pop up on the map. It'll actually, it'll actually uh, show the render in here too. So as you can see, it's starting to render. Uh, this is actually a flat world. It isn't a, uh, a normal Minecraft terrain. Then I can go to the surface map once that's rendered. I'll actually let this render quick. Everything will be output to the console so you can see the render process. I'm going to pause until it's done. Okay, so as you can see, this is a pretty bad example. Uh, as you can see, because this world is kind of messed up um, <laughs> in my uh, server. But uh, yeah, as you can see, this is the 3D view, uh, the surface map view. And it is still rendering. And this is a small world, but it is still rendering. It will take a while to render. But if you want to stop the render, you can type in dyne map uh, full render. Wait, what? I think it's stop render. Um. Did it stop render? No, probably it's probably not. Oh, uh, cancel render, sorry. Cancel render, and then world. So it cancelled the render. So now uh, I'm going to stop that awful rendering of my horrible terrain there. And let's try uh, some other worlds. Let's try planetoids. Planetoids is uh, just a world I created of made out of a bunch of planetoids. Let's uh, render that quick. Let's do dyne map full render planetoids then I can oh wow it's doing it quite quick well did that level quite quick anyway so um I did my own kind of version of planetoids here <laughs> with my friend and this is the uh, 2d map view if we go into the 3d map view as you can see it starts to render this that's, look how cool that is. It's really high definition. You can zoom in and zoom out. You'll lose a bit of definition if you zoom in a bit, but that's alright. As you can also use texture packs with this too. And you can change the zoom levels too, so if you want to, you can have your um, memory being eaten up and have uh, it zoomed in extreme. <laughs> but uh, that's your choice. <laughs> I would recommend keeping it, keeping everything the same. Anyway, let's go over some of the plugins that uh, you can add to the dynamic map plugin. The dynamic map plugin. So all of the plugins made by Mike Prim. I'm only going to go over the ones made by Mike Prim. There might be some others, but um, let's go over these. If you search dynamic map in the plugins.bucket.org, um, it will come up with the actual page for the dynamic map and then all the plugins for it. And these are some really cool plugins. Uh, the installation's really, really self-explanatory. You just move it to the plugins folder. So I'm just going to go over what they do. The first one here, dynamic map mobs, will simply show the mobs in game. Pretty cool. So you can see the zombie, spider, you can see the icons in the, on the map. Really nice. And of course each of these uh, different plugins have their own configuration file which you can change. Well most of them do anyway, I think. So now let's go over dynamic map residence. 
as you can see, this map will show residence show um, resident for the plugin residence. It will show regions for that in the dialog map, and that's kind of the same for townie and factions and world guard and yeah. <laughs> so we won't have to go over those now. Um, let's go over the essentials one. Essentials and command book. These two plugins will show the warps, homes, and uh, yeah, as you see, home and all different kinds of things that have to do with essentials and command book. And uh, then there's a bunch of other ones. <laughs> They're pretty self-explanatory. It shows what they do here, and then they, they have configurations which you can change. Everything that this guy does is self-explanatory, or he he comes with an in-depth tutorial for you. So, yeah. Um, so anyway, that kind of concludes our uh, Dynamic Map um, plugin spotlight. Thank you for watching, and uh, please give a lot of uh, credit to Mike Prim. He's really cool. Um, create some really awesome plugins. Um, I use Dynamic Map um, on my server. Well, sometimes it's up, sometimes it isn't. Um, but but yeah, I, I, he does some really cool stuff. And give make sure you uh, leave him a nice comment saying a uh, good job. And uh, and yeah, uh, thank you for watching, and I will see you later.